Welcome back. A solid day. Solid. Good solid day. The Dow is set to snap its three-day losing streak. It's up over 250 points. We're heading back up again. Off the highs of the day, as you can see, that was sort of mid-morning-ish, and there was a bit of a trough in early afternoon. But I think what you're seeing here is just buying after beating up. And investors are optimistic about the recovery. New jobless numbers also uh, helped to boost that. 441,000 Americans filed for first-time unemployment last week. That's several thousand fewer than expected. And the lowest point of the entire higher pandemic. And there you see the chart. In fact, overall, CEOs are more confident now than they've been in the last 45 years. It's the new survey from the Conference Board and the Business Council. You see confidence is at 82 percent compared to 34 percent during wave one of COVID. And trust in CEOs is also growing. A report from Edelman shows people trust their employers more than they trust businesses, NGOs, governments or the media. And that trust has been rising. Richard Edelman is with me, Chief Executive of Edelman. He's with me from New York via Skype. Richard, it's good to see you, sir. You're looking well. And that's, a, that's great Thank to you. hear the blessing in itself. And um, the, the trust barometer tells us what? That, that, uh, that CEOs did a good job over the last year? That things are, are sort of getting back to normal and CEOs can be, can be praised? Richard, I think that um, a year ago, um, government was the most trusted institution. It, we had the big bazooka. It was trying to solve a problem as large as World War II. And here we are a year later, and business has emerged as the most trusted institution, significantly higher than government. And even across those issues that are classically in the government remit, education, health, um, even vaccine information, it's business that has the advantage uh, over government. So there are all these new um, loads onto the private sector, and it's sort of like Atlas holding up the world. And the question is, which issues um, the smart CEO will pick? Uh, it's not smart to take on every issue of society. Before we do the which, let's do the why. And why did has government gone from hero to zero? I think it's, um, you know, slow uh, acceptance of uh, immunization, slow application in some countries, also um, economic disparities. Um, in our study, we found a record difference in opinion between the mass population, which is flatlined, and the elites who are soaring along with the markets. And we also see that um, there are a lot of fears, Richard, the pandemic trauma uh, that's been inflicted on the yeah. world is significant. Um, the extent, two thirds of people say I'm still in, in a sort of pandemic mentality. And in fact, getting a shot doesn't change your attitude very much. You know, only 19% of people who get vaccinated want to fly versus 16 who haven't been vaccinated. So yeah. again, the return to the workplace uh, is really in question unless we can change people's mindsets. This idea, though, but, but you see, I also have a theory that it won't be long before mindsets do get changed and uh, as, as memories recede. On the trust question, how important will it be that companies are seen to, or actually not seen, but actually do keep their promises? I'm thinking about Goldman and JP Morgan, who are now saying you're coming back to the office. Um, and every company, and you're, you're a CEO of a large company, you're having to juggle that issue between your staff, who I'm sure have told you they want hybridization working, versus the reality that you might prefer them in the office. So I think this return to workplace is the ultimate crucible for business. And business can't do it alone. It has to be partnered with government. Taking the subway, flexible hours, some kind of litigation uh, coverage, you know, for someone who might get sick in, in transit. Um, all these things have to be done in partnership. And for example, in uh, New York, for instance, if September 1 is the sort of return to work date, it has to be a joint effort. The idea that business can do all of these societal issues on its own is delusional. It's wrongheaded, it's too risky, because particularly between societal issues, for example, dealing with systemic racism or sustainability. Yeah. Absolutely, wage levels, business can lead on those, but government has to lead on education or health systems or transit safety, and even on return to workplace with the rules of the playing field.
I just want to talk before we leave you today. I just want to talk about. Did you see the story during the during the week? And we'll go into more details. But the idea of the man who started TikTok, who, who turned into a sensation, his name is Zhang Yiming. He says he's not CEO material. He's not social enough to be a CEO. He likes reading and listening to music and things like that. Do you think there is? We'll, we'll talk, do you think there is a CEO aura? that you have to have that is outgoing and is not introverted if you're going to lead? There's a new set of skills for CEOs. You've got to respond to the reality that 80% of your employees want you to be able to speak up on the issues of the day. And you have to be able to listen broadly in society and then choose which of those you're going to apply the company's muscle behind. For example, on sustainability, are you going to change your supply chain? How are you going to talk to your employees on the first anniversary of the murder of George Floyd? All of these require CEOs as public diplomat. And then we're going to have voting rights bills uh, in all sorts of states. And how do you speak on that? So, again, the idea of having sensitivity to the political issues, for instance, U.S.-China relations on TikTok, is urgent matter for CEOs. Good to see you, Richard. Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely, Keep well. Sir. You